Ah yes, very reminiscent of blood. Hello guys, it is of course I, Trollface the Man, and welcome back to another video where we're going to be testing homemade wood stains for their viability as, well, a wood stain. White pine here for one sample, and red oak here for another sample. You might notice though that we're, we're on 17 right now, when in reality we should be, for the third episode, on 11. Uh, 11 through 15, not 17 through 20, and there is a reason for that. Here's number 11 uh, for the pine. Here's number 11 for the red oak. My dog decided to use this one as a chew toy, and this one fell into a bin of dirty water and sat there for quite some time. I am going to use this instead and skip over these ones for right now. I guess I should never bet on the number 11 because apparently it seems to be fairly unlucky for me. What I wanted to try is food coloring. Ah, yes. Humble food coloring. There's two different ways we could use the food coloring as a stain. We could either put it directly on there at 100% concentration, or we could dilute it and then put it on. But I figured that doing both as separate videos wouldn't make much sense, so I wanted a way to combine the two. So I had a suggestion for one of my friends, which is I should just tape down the center and do one half with the full food coloring and one half with the diluted food coloring, which we will actually be doing. Now keep in mind, I only have four colors of food coloring, being red, blue, green, and yellow, yet there are five pieces of wood. Ah. See, that's where a little special one is going to come into play. If I'm already doing a video on coloring wood using food coloring, why don't I kind of do the opposite and use something that's used to remove coloring? Bleach. So my idea is, is that I want to do the same process as I would with the normal stains, except for apply three layers of bleach to these pieces of wood and see what happens. So yeah, that is pretty much the plan. Let's get to it. All right, it is all taped up, excluding the ones that are gonna be bleach. So I'm gonna put these off to the side. I was thinking because I need to be careful not to like oversaturate the tape and then also not to wander over the tape line, that this might be better for me to do with a brush. So I have a little brush here that I will apply and then wipe out. And then I also got these little cups, which I do reuse things like this if I can, so that way I'm not generating so much plastic waste, but I have little cups to put the dye in. So I think I'm gonna start with the yellow. Yellow has a very distinctive red look to it. That's kind of funny. Is this actually the yellow? Yes, it is in fact the, the yellow. Wonder how it's gonna look on the wood. I'm just gonna brush it on. There's going to be a little bit of bleed over anyways, I know that for a fact, it's just going to happen, but uh, I'm gonna try and prevent it as much as I as I can. It's a little bit of like the sort of natural oils of the wood, making it where the dye doesn't instantly absorb in. It kind of sits on the surface for a second before absorbing in, but then it does seem to manage to do so. So now we're going to do the red oak. Same thing, I'm just gonna kind of brush it on. Almost forgot the sides here. And of course on the pine too, I need to get the sides. And then of course, per standard procedure, we're just gonna wipe off the excess, but at least with this first coat, I don't think that there is very much excess. It seems to have uh, absorbed itself right on in there. Yeah, so that is yellow. A little bit came off. Okay, so that is the yellow next to the untreated wood. I can't say I'm very much a fan of the yellow yet, but maybe I'll become a believer at some point. Oh, I flicked some yellow over in that one. Oops. For the next one, I am thinking a nice dark blue, seeing as it'll also help cover that little bit of yellow that I got on there. Very dark, very pigmenty. Let's see how this works. I mean, I honestly have a feeling that I'm probably not going to be much of a fan of any of the food colorings, but something that uh, we will find out here. And of course the edges, which always absorb the most. That is the blue on the pine. And again, I'm brushing in the 
I'm brushing down on the tape, not up on the tape, to help prevent uh, paint from potentially getting up and underneath of it. I think we're going to still have some bleed through, especially as it wants to carry through the grains, but this is just a test anyway, so. Yep, that is blue. And already I might need to take back what I say about not thinking any of these are going to look potentially cool, because this actually looks like it might be a little bit cool. I'm just going to use this cloth to wipe off any excess, which there really isn't. It absorbed in really rapidly. I think that these food colorings have a uh, carrier in there that probably helps them permeate, so they absorb right in quite readily. That is an interesting look, to be honest. We'll have to see whether or not I fall in love with it later on. It uh, actually does look kind of interesting so far. Uh, yes, the food coloring has propylene glycol in it, which is actually an alcohol, which means that uh, for certain things like this, it might actually absorb in a lot better than most other sort of random, just solely water-based stains that we use. Next, my friends, we have red, which I am looking forward to this one. I think it might be pretty cool out of all of them. A lot of red food coloring. I'm not sure anymore, but a lot of red food coloring used to be made out of crushed beetles. Um, that's uh, <laughs> a lot of the food colorings like for red velvet cake and stuff were made with the red food coloring and it was made out of crushed beetles. Uh, I think they're Egyptian beetles. Uh, again, I don't know if that's the same as it is, or if it's still the same as it used to be, but that's how it used to be. Uh, yes, very reminiscent of blood. The pine, I can see, again, it wants to kind of sit on the surface for a second before absorbing in, but then after it has that brief time on the surface, it then absorbs in. <laughs> And now onto the oak. I would like to shift my hands more often to get better camera shots, but the problem is, is that if I get any of this dye in my gloves by mistake, which would be very easy to do, then it will get all over the piece as I try and shift it around. So I'm sorry for the camera shots not necessarily being the best uh, with this, but I'm trying here. <laughs> Oh, interesting. That is definitely something. And wipe off the excess. Okay, we now have our red wood next to the untreated pine and our red red oak, very red oak, next to the untreated red oak. And yeah, they they have an appearance to them. It almost I mean, it looks like a red, a really super red stain. So we have green food coloring. Just give it a little squirty squirt of the green food coloring. It's very, very dark. It's like the blue. Again, it just, with the pine, it just kind of sits on the surface. It doesn't want to absorb in for a second. You can see that there's like a certain amount of surface tension and then it just sucks in. I would suspect that it is from, again, the pine having a slightly waxy surface to it. Or not waxy, uh, resiny, resinous surface. Again, it, it, it doesn't actually look too bad for, for what it is. Kind of created an interesting highlight with the uh, the knot there. And the same with the red oak. This red oak is no longer red oak. It is green oak. It is very green oak. Green red oak. Interesting. Now anyone that's watched the this series of videos so far will know that what I'm going to actually do is apply uh, two additional coats of whatever we're, the stain we're testing onto here after this dry. So I'm gonna give a couple hours to dry and then I'm gonna brush on another uh, coat onto each one of the uh, different pieces of wood and then repeat it one more time. So that way we get three 
coats, uh, and hopefully as even and nice of a stain as we possibly can get. But right now we still have one more to do, which is bleach. Because if we're going to color wood, we might as well uncolor wood. Now this starts getting a little bit more tricky and potentially unsafe because bleach on the skin is definitely an irritant. It can uh, potentially cause burns, chemical burns. Bleach in your eyes can definitely make you go blind and it's not good to inhale the fumes from bleach. So I am going to be wearing safety glasses. Of course, I'm gonna be wearing these gloves and uh, I'm just going to try not to breathe in too many fumes. Uh, I don't think in the small amounts I'm gonna to have to really worry about it, but keep in mind bleach is a chemical and it is potentially unsafe. So if you do try and use bleach on stuff, make sure you do it safely. So I have my bleach in this little cup here. I got my goggles and my gloves. Interesting thing about bleach is it's actually a chemical called sodium hypochlorite, which chemical formula is N-A-C-L-O, which you might recognize that as salt with an oxygen at the end of it. Yes, that is right. Bleach is actually uh, chemically the same as salt with an oxygen molecule and can be heated to actually decompose into salt and oxygen. We're going to use the bleach in order to try and lighten this wood. I have no idea if this is going to work, but it was worth a shot. Um, that oxygen in the bleach, to my understanding, is most of what actually does the bleaching action because uh, oxygen is oxidizing and when basically reactive oxygen comes in contact with things, it, it destroys them, it rips them apart chemically. Uh, that's why ozone and stuff is so reactive and so deadly to uh, viruses and microbes and things. I don't expect to see any immediate result from this, to be perfectly honest. I think that likely uh, this will be something that will take hours or more to take effect. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply the bleach very, very liberally onto the wood and then give it those hours to sit. And I'm not going to le you reuse this little cup of bleach. I'm going to dump it out and pour fresh bleach every time. Bleach in the presence of sunlight and bleach in the presence of um, air causes it to start to decompose and break down. Um, bleach is actually fairly unstable. They have to put stabilizers in it uh, and it will actually go bad. Most people don't know that, but if you leave bleach around for too long, it will actually lose its potency. It'll just decompose. So I'm going to use fresh bleach out of the gallon each time so that way it is hopefully as good as we're gonna get it. And for this, I'm just, I'm not going to wipe off the surface. I want the bleach to actually absorb in. So I'm going to wipe it with the wet rag and get it as even as possible, but I'm not gonna wipe off the excess. I want that to absorb in. I'll tune back in a while and we'll see if this has any effect. So we had a really interesting effect, something that has kind of caught me a little bit by surprise. This is the bleached piece of wood. Uh, it only has one layer of bleach so far, but untreated wood, bleached. And again, untreated wood right here and then the bleached wood. As you can see, the bleach doesn't seem like that it, it bleached uh, the wood. It seems like it darkened it on both the pine and the red oak, which is quite fascinating. This is a good indication of why you wouldn't want to use bleach on pieces of wood to clean, which I heard is supposed to be safe, but this this says otherwise. Well, anyways, I'm going to do the three total coats uh, like I always do, and we'll come back when that's done. Okay, so yeah, I de-taped these and honestly, I'm not too surprised that, especially on the oak, we had a lot of uh, 
a lot of bleed over. Basically what happened is because those are little tiny channels and because of surface tension of the water, uh, it tends to, or the dye, it tends to kind of suck into those channels uh, versus the pine that doesn't have as deep of uh, sort of ridges and grooves and stuff. It did not do it anywhere near as much except for on the sides here. But it is what it is. One thing that's very surprising is the bleach. Uh, unbleached red oak versus the bleached red oak. You can see that it didn't lighten it. it. It did something really strange. And then the, the bleached pine versus the unbleached pine. Uh, both of them, the red oak and the pine, turn kind of greenish. Both of them will need to be washed off uh, because there's salt residue left behind by the bleach. So I will do that before actually polyurethaning along with uh, sufficient time to dry. But yeah, I'm gonna move on to uh, doing the diluted coloring now. I'm now gonna make the diluted food coloring solution. I'm not going to show each individual one of these and I'm not going to show applying the diluted solution to each individual piece of wood, but I will do it for one of the pieces of wood. I've selected blue here because I figured blue might give uh, one of the best results. I have a cup of water here and I think I'm going to go with a half a teaspoon of dye. And hopefully this is not too much. Hmm. Maybe that is a little bit too much. It does look really intensely dark, but I know for certain it has to be way less concentrated than what we had before. Um, because obviously we're using it straight. So, I am just going to go with it and we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, nowhere near as dark. It looks super dark. But when you spread it out, it's, it's nowhere near like that. Give us hopefully a good idea about what it will look like if we apply it lighter. Reality, maybe I should have done the lighter side first, but it wouldn't have changed so much, so it wouldn't have been anywhere near as cool. Okay, I'm gonna have to let that, give that a minute to soak in, and then wipe it off. And again now with the oak, it's gonna be a lot harder not to have this, uh, this dye up here run because of the fact that there is so much of it. So I'm just gonna try and do my best. To not spread it around too much. And there we go. We have the lighter food coloring dye. And we'll see how it might end up turning out. Same process as before. I'm going to do the three coats on, um, on all of it. And we'll see how everything looks in the end. So here we are after the three coats of the diluted dye. Most of them were pretty all right, except for the yellows. There was a lot of the old yellow coming up and bleeding through, which is a little bit of a concern when I go to put on the water-based polyurethane. So I'm gonna have to be very careful with the first coat. But yeah, uh, this is it. I cleaned off the bleach just with some water and stuff to get rid of the salt residue, the bleach wood, and uh, we're going to move into now polyurethaning. One thing is I really hate myself because these I mixed up 17 and 16. I can't believe I did this. It's actually, this is how it is uh, in terms of the wood order. And that is going to just absolutely drive me crazy. But uh, yeah. Uh, these are the edges, these are the two pieces of untreated wood, so this is the full dye uh, edges. Now reversed, uh, this is the diluted dye edges, this is the bleach on this side now, and the untreated woods on this side. Much uh, softer color, for sure. So I did put the first layer of the water-based polyurethane on here, and per my suspicion, you can see that a lot of the coloring uh, was actually picked up by the polyurethane. And because of that, it meant that I had to clean my brush and do some curious application method and stuff with it that made this process a lot more complicated. But hopefully, after the first coat is on, I won't have to worry about that 
uh, bleeding for the second and third and su subsequent coats. I think for something like this, if you were to use oil base, you wouldn't have the problem with it bleeding. Alternatively, uh, using some type of spray, like using a spray system, again, you probably wouldn't have to worry so much about it bleeding because a lot of it has to do with me brushing. But if you were doing a piece of wood that was just one single color, maybe it mixing with the polyurethane isn't a problem anyways. And that actually brings up an interesting idea for a future video. One, mixing food coloring with polyurethane and seeing how that works, and two, testing to see if the dyes uh, will leach at all with the oil base, which I, I really don't think they will. Uh, food colorings with water-based polyurethane to specifically uh, specify. It's been a few moons since that last segment of video. Almost a year's worth, to be exact. One thing, though, that is cool about this is that because it's been a year, we get to see how the colors are looking after a year has passed and what can i say except for they look great these weren't uh protected from sunlight at all these were in a room that had ambient sunlight coming in through the window they weren't being shined directly on by the sun but at least with ambient sunlight exposure they've been looking good so of course we have the pine up here and then the oak down here i didn't go as crazy as i might normally with getting like a mirror smooth finish on the top of these pieces because as I brushed on uh, new coats of polyurethane, there's probably about five of them on here, as I brushed on new ones, I was still getting issues with the uh, food coloring managing to end up in the polyurethane and I would have to wash the brush between each color and it was wasting a lot of my polyurethane and uh, it was just kind of tedious so I, I stopped at five but even still I think that it does a good job of showing off the results so obviously red green blue yellow and then bleach and bleach the green for the pine looks awesome it seems to have almost given it, much like the pen ink that we tested before, uh, a like iridescent effect or pearlescent effect. You can see when I move it like this, how it gets that, that shimmer. The other colors don't really seem to do that. The red doesn't seem to do that, excluding the blue. The blue has a faint sort of hint of it. Um, you cannot see those on the oak. It seems to be something that uh, has to do specifically with the pine. Um, but yeah, the colors seem to have turned out quite well. So this is the dark food coloring for the pine. Then the light food coloring for the pine. Then the dark food coloring for the oak, excluding obviously the bleach. And then the light food coloring for the oak. And had a little bit of run there. But all of them seem to have worked quite good. Quite satisfactory so far. And I think without direct sunlight exposure, at least from what I've seen, the color seems to last fairly well. I am uh, not only surprised, but I am impressed because uh, that seems to have worked out pretty wonderfully. And even like the getting the very light tones on the rough wood, I could see um, applications where people might want to do that. Um, and then, you know, obviously the very dark tones too, but that effect though with the green is really cool. So anyways, I guess that's it. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys always, including my Patreons, who uh, generously support the channel and help fund videos like this. I'm going to start posting uh, for my Patreons some uh, written projects, uh, just kind of talking about things that I'm doing on the side that might not be video worthy, but I still end up doing anyway. So just kind of give a little extra reward for those that decide to support. And if you do decide to support yourself, please check out the Patreon link in the description below. If you like this series, please share it with your friends, whoever might have use of it. And I think you guys are all awesome. I uh, hope you'll hit up the like button if you enjoyed this video. And I hope you subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys very much again. And bye.